good morning to you. Congratulations on the numbers. Um, look, where do you go from here with this business? You've got a new movie that's, that's going to be made. You are broadening the base in terms of the products that you're offering. Uh, you're changing the demographics and the gender story when it comes to the Lego offering as well. I, can you continue with this pace of growth? Are you able to up this pace of growth? Well, I think uh, in all likelihood we'll see the growth rate come down somewhat. We can still continue with a very healthy growth rate, but we are a company that is only growing organically. So we never really make acquisitions because we want to stay very true to the Lego brick, the Lego brand. And I think that's really what makes us very unique as a company. And that uniqueness gives us a global appeal that applies equally well in Beijing or Berlin or, or Boston. And that's why we need to stick to it. Now, I am confident that we can continue to grow because the global middle class is growing. If I look at the company in an 80-year uh, history, then we seem to be growing roughly with the growth in the global uh, household income. So as the world continues to grow, as new markets develop, particularly in Asia and other emerging markets, the Lego brand will also continue to grow, helped by the new media and digitalization, but sticking to the Lego brick. Jürgen, I mean, it seems amazing. We're talking actually about it with Guy earlier. I mean, it, it seems that we spend both uh, our, our weekends just building Legos with our children. But when you look at the figures today, you know, 12% top line growth, deflationary world, and then that margin, 33.9% of operating margin. How difficult is that going to defend? These numbers are, are really spectacular at the moment. Yes, obviously, uh, I think we are at a, a sort of a zenith almost. Uh, I'm extremely proud that it is our 10th consecutive year of organic growth. So I'm mindful that, of course, uh, one should never be complacent. But I do uh, try, you know, as, as a privately held company owned by just one family, to not focus too much on disappointing on financial performance, but really stay focused on not disappointing on stakeholders. So for me, the retailer is a super important partner, and they need to be making money selling Lego products. Our consumers need to recommend us even more and we do measure that as well as in terms of a net promoter score and we want our staff to be highly creative motivated and engaged and we measure that as well and that's really where I focus my attention to make sure we never become complacent and can continue to reinvent ourselves and then I hope uh, with that in mind we will also continue to see some some awesome financial numbers as well how dependent are you on on this sort of the creativity of others though to make this work Minecraft, uh, you, you've got Minecraft Lego, which seems like such a logical fit in so many ways. Frozen, Star Wars, etc., etc. You seem to obviously, you, you've got great licensing people uh, and they're doing a good job, but, but I, is, is there the kind of, is there the creativity stream in front of you that you can latch onto to really take advantage and keep the growth rate going as well? Well, well, first of all, I think it's important to say that the mainstay of our sales is on products that we develop ourselves entirely and are based on the creative idea of the Lego brick. Now, that idea is so appealing that when people develop other great creative stories and properties such as Frozen or Minecraft or Star Wars, their first port of call for a commercial partner in the toy market is always the Lego brand because it is the leading and most popular brand in that market. So they come to us with their ideas and then with some of them, such as Minecraft or Star Wars, we have a fantastic uh, creative dialogue, which means that we inspire each other uh, in terms of developing the property going forward. And I think it's fair to say that thanks to the Lego brand, Star Wars has now been introduced to several generations of children uh, because we were actually those children's first experience with the Star Wars brand. Remember, there's a movie coming out later this year, but it is the first movie in many, many years. And in the meantime, the Lego brand has kept Star Wars a major brand in the world of entertainment. Yeah, it's true. As, the, as these kids get younger, they, they forget the classic, uh, Jorgen. Give us a sense of what, so you, you went through some of the toys that are doing well, but regionally, what, what's very hot right now? So who's buying more Legos? And actually, again, on the toys, is it the tie-ups such as Star Wars, or is it products that are, for example, catered more to, to girls that are, are ahead of the game? Well, the growth is actually very broad-based. We're seeing uh, lines like Lego Creator, Lego Technic, which are sort of super classic Lego lines doing extremely well with high double-digit growth rates. But we're also seeing Star Wars uh, remaining very popular and growing. We see uh, Lego Duplo, our preschool offering, is one of our top five lines, and so is Lego Friends, our theme particularly relevant for girls. So I'd say it's, it's broad-based and also 
in terms of the global spread, it's very good. We have seen, you know, in a place like Sweden, which you'd say that must be a very mature market, we've seen a, a double-digit growth rate also in Belgium and also in the UK and in the US. But certainly in places like China, we've seen more than 50% growth. And in Russia, we've seen uh, 35%, 35 to 40% uh, growth rates. So I'd say the, the growth is also uh, broad-based. And I think the explanation to that is, one, this is really a globally appealing brand. It's a global assortment we're selling, kind of like a few other major iconic global brands. And then secondly, you know, I think the children are children everywhere. They do have different influences. Some children have not heard about Star Wars, but fundamentally, child's play is the same in most countries around the world and, and interestingly parents also value the same learning and benefits from playing in different cultures so when I meet a Chinese mother she talks about the same aspirations for her child the same value from playing for her child as an yep. American or a German mother would do just uh, one final well two final questions Jürgen when am I going to be able to buy a Lego Oscar uh, and is the Emmett character behind you stuck together in any way with glue? <laughs> no. So uh, the answer to the last one is, of course, no. We don't build models uh, that are glued if they're built by Lego fans. They're always uh, made, really. But I think, unfortunately, the, uh, the image figure here behind me is made by my marketing department. So there's probably a steel structure inside to make sure it can travel the world and be displayed in stores. Uh, but uh, regarding the Lego Oscar, that uh, big event that happened a few days ago was actually it's not created by us. It was uh, the organizers who did that, and they asked a Lego certified professional to produce Lego Oscars, and I'm sure he'd be happy to make one for you as well. Yeah, we need one. We feel like yeah. we deserve you one. Can buy the, you, you, if you go on the internet, you can find the, the PDF. People have put together how you do this. Um, yeah, my question is how long does it take? So you got it for a simple tower. It takes me a long time. So a, a, a Lego Oscar. Yeah, it could take a while. I'd have to take out a weekend. <laughs> Jürgen, congratulations. Thank you very much indeed for spending so much time with us this morning. Jürgen Vinknusnop, the CEO of Lego.